What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video. In this video today, I got a special guest. I got the man himself, Eric Helms, on the channel, talking about flexible dieting. Now, you guys are probably all familiar with if it fits your macros and flexible dieting, but probably not the origin, the actual real applications and how most people get it twisted. Eric Helms is one of the guys that was there from the get-go, one of the guys that helped popularize the concept, then it kind of got you know, misconstrued. He's going to set the record straight how to really use flexible dieting to assist with your body composition. If you want to see more content featuring Eric, make sure to like the damn video and leave a comment. Without further ado, I'll let Eric do the rest of the talking. What's going on everybody? This is Eric Helms from 3D Muscle Journey. Happy to be back on Omar's channel. Omar, thanks for having me as always. Today I'm here to talk to you about flexible dieting. Something that pretty much everyone in the fitness community talks about at one point or another, but that most of them get wrong in my opinion. So, how often have you heard someone talk about flexible dieting and in the same breath talk about if it fits your macros? I even see people type out flexible dieting slash if it fits your macros because they assume that if it fits your macros and flexible dieting are the same thing. Well, I do agree that uh, if it fits your macros is more flexible than your typical approach to dieting, having a rigid meal plan, but actually flexible dieting is a concept that came up in the early 90s. It was developed by some researchers who started to investigate the attitudes people had about dieting. Flexible dieting is actually about the way we think about food. And back in the 90s, they discovered that there were basically two types of people. People who had a rigid model of restraining their eating behavior and those who had a flexible model of restraining their eating behavior. And they found that those who had a flexible mental approach to dieting versus a rigid mental approach to dieting were much more successful in their weight loss efforts. They were able to maintain weight loss, uh, they were able to lose weight without as much psychological stress, and they were actually lighter people. So that means that the people who were more rigid in their approach we're not able to lose weight, weren't able to keep it off, we're more likely to develop an eating disorder, and we're less happy with their body image. So that you can imagine how frustrating it would be to be more and more rigid with your diet, yet get less success. Now the question is, is then okay, well what defines a rigid restraint model of thinking? Well, what it really came down to was thinking in a dichotomous or black and white way. Uh, if you look at what actually quantifies someone as a uh, someone who has a rigid restraint, it's based on how they look at food. So if you look at food in a black or white manner, or if you see yourself being on or off the diet, that typically is predictive of not doing too well in the long term. You even see this in bodybuilders who might have a, a great ability to restrain themselves, but once the diet's over, they go off the rails. And that's often alleviated by having a more flexible approach. Now, you may be thinking, okay, so what's the problem with calling if it fits your macros a flexible approach? Certainly being able to eat whatever food you want and fit it into these numbers it, it is flexible, right? Doesn't that mean you have flexible restraint? Not necessarily. And here's why. Again, it comes back to that attitude. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen people who follow uh, a certain macro prescription, but as soon as they missed one of their targets, it's like they've blown the diet. Essentially, they're doing the same thing that a rigid dieter might do with a food choice, seeing it as, or, as good or bad. They see their macros is now either good or bad. And if they miss them by five grams, if they go over a little bit, then oh, the day's screwed, I might as well have a large pizza, right? So instead of just telling you you're wrong for thinking if it fits your macros is flexible dieting, what I'm here to do is give you some tools on how you can make your approach, if you are using if it fits your macros, a little more flexible to give yourself some more options. One thing that I do is I use what's called a three-tiered approach. In the three-tiered approach, basically we have three positive messages. We have good, we have better, and we have best. Okay? Best is that we hit our macros within a certain range. Instead of having a rigid target like 52 grams of fat or something asinine like that, we might have 50 grams of fat as a target, but then we have a plus or minus 5 to 10 gram range. That way you have your three numbers, but you know they're not actually specific numbers, they're a range. So for example, you can have a plus or minus 10 gram range on all three macros, maybe plus or minus 5 grams on fat since they're higher calories, and plus or minus 10 on carbs and protein. So that's best. And ideally when I talk to my clients, I say, hey, we want to try to do that most of the time. Maybe 75, 80% of the time. However, life happens, you're going to make mistakes, or sometimes you don't have access to a scale. 
uh, or you don't have access to the right foods where you can't hit your protein, carbohydrate, and fat targets. So we shift down to, to tier two, better. And better is protein and calories. That allows you to have a different ratio of fat to carbohydrate. And believe it or not, it actually allows you to have alcohol, right? Because you can't expect people in fitness to completely give up alcohol, even if they drink in moderation all the time. That's probably too rigid. Uh, that said, you also don't want to go, go on the deep end and just have, you know, four-way protein shakes and then just vodka for the rest of the day, right? Uh, a good rule of thumb is to not go over 15% of your total calories for the day as alcohol. One thing I like to tell my athletes is, hey, if you're going to drink on, on occasion, that's fine, you can, but I want you to drink like you had a 5 a.m. leg day the next morning. That typically keeps things under control, all right? So as a recap, tier one, best, hitting all three macros. That doesn't allow for alcohol, obviously. Tier two, calories and protein. That means your calories can, from, can come from any combination of carbs and fat and maybe a little bit of alcohol. And then finally, tier three, which is good, is simply just calories. This is for one of those days where you know things are gonna be way out of whack, where you've totally blown your protein intake for the day and you're like, you know what? That's all right, I'm just gonna revert back into the best I can given the situation that's already happened and just hit calories. So that's a really simple way to add a little bit more flexibility to what is already a step in the right direction of if it fits your macros. And remember that a flexible dieter is not just someone who sees what they can get away with by fitting foods into these three numbers, but who understands the bigger picture and, and knows that a day isn't lost just because they went five grams over their carbohydrate intake. If you want to learn more about flexible dieting, you can check out myself, Greg Knuckles, and uh, Dr. Mike Zerdos' uh, new publication that we're making called MASS, Monthly Applications in Strength Sport. It's a research review targeted for powerlifters, bodybuilders, Olympic weightlifters, uh, anyone who just wants to get as big and lean and shredded and jacked and strong as possible. Um, and we have the first free, the first issue is completely for free. Uh, and I have a video in there where I talk about the history of flexible dieting and how to implement it. And it gets way more nerdy than this. So if that's something you want to get, if you want to really get stuck into, feel free to download it. All right, guys, thank you for the time. Talk to you later. Well, guys, that is all the time we have. As you can see, flexible dieting is different than what most people think it is. And really, it is a way of thinking in order to liberate yourself from that restrictive mindset that usually follows dieting. I gotta get out of here. Thank you so much to Eric for doing the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. And last thing I wanna say, I talked about this before with the video featuring Greg Knuckles, himself, Eric Helms, and Mike Zordos have formed Mass Monthly Applications in Strength Sports. It's a new monthly research review. Those that are interested in increasing their knowledge when it comes to lifting, getting a better physique, everything to do with trying to get better in the gym, I highly recommend you sign up. They currently have a pre-sale. I'm not endorsed in the slightest, but I tell you what, there's a lot of fit teas going on, detox teas, a lot of BS in the industry. I like promoting good information. I highly recommend it for you guys. Check it out. Link is in the description. I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.